I'm Angel Donovan, and this is the Dating Skills Podcast. This is a 14-year ongoing mission to discover the truth about what works in dating, sex, and relationships, to become a better man. Join me as I leave no stone unturned, chase down every expert, role model, and mentor with insights to get us to that goal as fast as possible. This show is about bringing you the best of that information so that you can take it in and change your life for the better, step by step, episode by episode. Angel Donovan here for another episode of Dating Skills Podcast. We're at episode 50. We made it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all your support to help us get here. It's it's been great. And this last week, we actually hit number 20 in the iTunes ranking for self-help. We're in the self-help category, of course, because we're helping you make your lives better. That is pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. And I would love to get in the top 10 because what happens when you get in the top 10 is that you get a lot more exposure. You know, you appear more in iTunes. And to do that, what you can do to help us is just write a review if you haven't done so already. So you do that in iTunes. If you haven't done that, Please take a moment out right now just to do it. It would make a huge difference to us and help us to get out and help more guys. Today, we're talking about one way to meet women. Now, there are three different ways to meet women that you may have heard about before in this podcast or on the site. There is cold approaching. So you're approaching women that you don't know. So we call it cold instead of warm. That could be in a variety of situations during the day or in the evening in bars and clubs, which is typical for most guys, of course. Then you have social circles. So if you become more social in your life and you get involved in more social circles, now these could be all sorts of communities. These can be groups of friends. This can be work. This can be the college you go to. It can be hobbies, classes, and so on, so on, so on. If you get more involved in more social circles like this in different areas of your life, your life will become more social and you'll be meeting more women naturally. The third way, of course, is online dating, which is also the one that's grown like astronomically over the last 10 or 15 years, right? So it's a lot more commonplace than it was before. There's a couple of things that are interesting about online dating, especially if you're a newbie, is that it's kind of easier to get started with it because like with the cold approaching, you know, it makes a lot of guys nervous, like you're approaching these women that you don't know and trying to strike up conversations. There's a lot of pressure all at one time, but with online dating, you know, it's, it's a bit more paced out. So it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to get so anxious. Myself, my first steps when I was studying this stuff, I actually did it on online dating. I spent a couple of weeks or so applying some of the concepts I was learning about attraction and stuff to what I was, you know, to online dating and experimenting there. You know, so it can be a good place to start with because of that, because it just takes, makes it a little bit easier. You can use all three or just one of these approaches to meeting women. Guys, as they get better and better, they tend to use a mix of them all, right? Because you can meet girls in in a variety of situations and you just fit into your lifestyle depending on how busy you are and the other factors, what, what suits you best. Today, we're talking about online dating because last week, Jackson Hunter reviewed a new product called the Click Magnet Dating System, which is a course teaching men how to uh, do the whole online dating thing and meet women effectively there. The thing about this course is it's got a really solid rating. The other thing is that it's really pretty simple. It's good for beginners. Um, And as you guys know by now, we like simple. We like easy to implement. That's uh, really helpful to you guys getting results. And the other thing is that it, and this is really unusual, it's data-driven because the guy who put this course together, his name's Scott Valdez, it's, it's pretty much based on data that he's collected through a company that he has called Virtual Dating Assistants, where basically they manage your online dating. So they do that for a lot of clients and they collect all the data. So they, they build the profiles, they write the messages and everything. We're going to hear about more about this in the, in the interview. We cover a lot of ground in today's episode and actually like we didn't have enough time to do everything, but you're going to find there's a wealth of information there. And you will also see that Scott talks really fast. You can really get a feel for the passion he has for this subject, which is great. So as usual, you can get the transcript and all of the show notes. There's quite a lot today at datingskillsreview.com slash DSP50. That's DSP50. Now let's meet Scott. One of the things I love about this show is that every time I ask where someone is, they're in a different place. Where are you today, Scott? I'm in Medellin, Colombia. Great. I've heard some great things about that. And it's not the first time I've talked to someone from there. So it seems to attract a few of us like dating guys. Yeah, you know, it's uh, one of the best places that I've been for online dating. I do a lot of traveling. Wherever I go, I use dating sites, as, as I, I imagine you could guess. So um, this is one of the places where it's just 
you wouldn't ever run out of women to, to message online and uh, produces a lot, a lot of interesting and attractive dates for me. Wow. So do you exclusively yourself just use online dating, just nothing else? Or you're, you're, you know, you kind of focus on that all the time in your life yeah. and outside? In, in my life, I, I do, I, I'd say about 95% of the women I date right now are from online. Hmm. I still do meet women out at bars, but it's, it's rare that, you know, it used to be that I would, I would meet a lot of women out at bars as well. But now it seems like when I'm at a bar, I'm already with a woman with a girl that I met on the internet. Mm. So it presented basically, you know, I have less single nights out, you know, which is, which is good for me. And I, and I like it that way, but yeah, I, I do recommend having more balance maybe even than I have myself. But since I do this for clients, it's good for me to be at the top of my game and I, yeah. and I do actually enjoy it. So I spend a lot of time meeting women online and, and with them in person, which yeah, reduces the amount of girls that I meet out and about. Well, that's cool. You know, I like to hear about a bit of specialism, you know, uh, it means that the guys can get more value out of you. So it's, it's all good. What's, what's kind of your background, you know, how did you get into this online dating stuff and, you know, making a company out of it and everything? Yeah. So basically online dating has, was initially a good idea for me because I met a, a, my first serious girlfriend on Facebook mm. right when it came out. It was actually a decent place to meet girls. Now it's a terrible place to meet girls. Right. But when it first came out there, you know, they, it was much easier to hit a girl's inbox rather than her other box. I don't mm. know if everybody's aware of that, but usually if you send a message to somebody you don't know, they're not going to see it. And uh, back then it was kind of, you know, the wild west of Facebook and I was just logged in, saw tons of hot girls. And I was like on my campus, mm. you know, it was only available for my university when it first, first came out of my school. So, you know, it just was a great place to meet girls. And I met a handful of girls and then one of them became my girlfriend. And so I thought it was, you know, I saw online as an opportunity to meet women, but then I went to online dating. And uh, once Facebook, you know, I broke up and that, I, that relationship ended and I got online, I sent messages on Facebook and no one was responding. I was like, what the hell happened? This is, <laughs> it was such a good place to meet women. What's changed? I didn't really get it. So it just didn't seem like an efficient place to meet women anymore. And so I moved to dating sites because I'd started to hear people talk about Plenty of Fish and some of the other properties. So I started sending messages and I also struck out there. Didn't have much success. And so I had to go kind of back to the drawing board, start reading blogs and start educating myself on what the best practices were, so to say, with meeting women online. And so eventually I kind of got it down myself. I started meeting lots of women. It took a lot of time, effort, and energy, but I did figure it out on my own. And then I started to work for a, a American company that was working me pretty hard uh, in terms of just the amount of hours I was working. Yeah. It was a yeah. startup. And, and so I just decided, hey, what I'm doing is really repetitive. Why don't I just get somebody uh, like a younger guy that's you know, just in college or whatever, pay him, have him do the messaging for me. And that way I don't have to deal with it. I can mm. just, you know, just go on the dates. So I ended up doing that. I hired a guy on Craigslist that was a, a, a creative writing student that mm. wanted some extra work on the side. I hired him for, you know, not much more than minimum wage yeah. and ended up, you know, it took a little while at the beginning to get things to flow and mm. get him to really do things the right way. Just, but once just, he got just, just down, to stop you there, what, were you, what year was this? Yeah. This is, when I was starting to outsource my mm. dating, this is about uh, 7, 2008. Okay. Did you ever see, there's, there's a video out there where Tim Ferriss describes how he did something similar where he outsourced. He just did it one time as some kind of experiment. And uh, he hired a whole bunch of teams like in, in, to work on different dating sites. And he got a whole bunch of dates just for a few days all lined up. He, so he did it as a one-off kind of thing. Did you ever see that? Yeah, yeah, I did. He took mm. a really different approach than I mm. did, but yeah. it, yeah, there's a similar idea. He, you know, basically hired, you know, low paid Filipino assistants to mm. send all of his, his emails. And he, you know, he had a, he actually Jamaicans on the team. I don't think he just, but they were pretty low paid <laughs> overall. Yeah. So, yeah. and they were, a lot of them, you know, a half of the, the people that were working on it weren't even native English speakers, which for me is mind blowing to know that it actually did. He did have success with right. that. But, it might've been just sheer volume. I wondered about that too. Yeah, yeah, it was probably a very, very, very high high volume and yeah, probably a yeah. fairly low response rate. But mm. he's not a bad looking guy either, and he's right. pretty, you know, pretty tall, fit guy. Okay, yeah. So, so you know, you you had you had this guy working for you, and it, it was going well. Yeah, yeah. It went, mm. you know, at the beginning it was a, a little bit uh, rough around the edges, but mm. you know, once we actually got the process down, yeah, it worked really well. I mean, he wasn't 
probably wasn't quite as good as I was doing on my own, but he was up there. And, uh, hmm. and so I was saving a lot of time by not spending it on the dating sites and just enjoying more dates with the women I wanted to meet. And yep. for me, it worked great. And that's kind of how the, my, my company started is, uh, I had my brother asking me about it. I had friends asking me about it. Cause hmm. I would tell kind of my, my core group of friends and family, what I was doing. Hmm. And a lot of them were interested in the idea that it was really cool to be able to get dates without having to do anything. Yeah. And so I just realized, you know, with all these guys that I know that would be interested in this kind of thing, hmm. why don't I start a service and, and do it, you know, professionally. So it's kind of like a subversion. I mean, like I, I was living in China for a while and they still have all of these agencies there. That's, that's pretty much what online dating is for them still, I think. So, you know, you pay someone and they go and look for someone for you. And it's kind of like headhunting in a way. So it's a little bit, it's, it's offline, of course, and stuff. But it's kind of, a, I guess, a similar outsourcing model. Yeah, yeah, it is similar. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, more, the more traditional application of, you know, ha- yep. hiring someone to, to find matches for you. And, you know, they call mm. them like professional matchmakers in the States. They're super expensive. But mm. for guys that really are super, uh, very marriage-minded, where my clients tend to be a little less marriage-minded, you know, a, a lot of them do want to get married, but they're not in a rush. Like somebody who hires a matchmaker is kind of ready to get hitched. So my big clients investment, are a so, you know. Yeah, it's also a big investment. I mean, you know, matchmakers in the States, they call mm. They usually charge at least 5K, some of them upwards of 25, 30K just to, just to get started. Wow, that's, that's big numbers. Okay, so, all right, you got started. So what, what year did the business actually start? The business, we, we founded uh, Virtual Dating Assistance in June of 2009. Cool, cool, very good. Now, how old are you now? Where do you live? So you said you live in Medellin, but like, is that, is that, kind of, is that your lifestyle? Are you always living there or you, you know, where do you live normally? No, no, I've I've been bouncing around a lot. I've actually in the past, oof, let's see, the past two two and a half years, I've lived in like seven countries. So yeah. I I bounce a lot. I've been mainly you know in South America and kind of Central Eastern Europe. Yeah. For the, for the most part, and yeah, I, I tend to focus on cities that are at least populations of around two million where online dating's caught on. And most <laughs> cities in the world where you can anything over two million, you've got plenty of online dating opportunity. But I do try to yeah. kind of take a look at the databases before I move there just to make sure that there are a lot of attractive girls. And wow. so I move there, I just meet women online. A lot of times I'll do a little bit of, you know, building a pipeline before I actually get there. Just have some girls kind of waiting. It's good to have advice about where to live, what apartment, you know, mm-hmm. how to find an apartment. I put, That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I try to put into work a little bit, <laughs> some of the girls that I meet online. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it makes moving around like I'm doing a lot more comfortable because uh, you're never, you know, feeling lonely if you've already, if you always got girls around. Right, you're already, you're already meeting people. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's kind of funny. I just chuckled there because like whenever I, I'm going to move somewhere, I, I research different things. <laughs> you know, I re, I've got my own criteria for some, somewhere I went to want to go. And it, it's normally things like internet. We were just talking about a second ago and like access to organic food or whatever, like other crazy stuff I've got going on in my life. And you have online dating. <laughs> so yeah, a different, that's different criteria. the only thing. But yeah, it's, it's definitely an important yeah. part of my but it, but it pays yeah. to do the research up front. Yeah. So I guess you learn it the same way I do, that it, it makes a big difference to... You know, how it yeah, goes. Can. Mm-hmm. How many women would you say you've dated over this time? Like you've been on dates with basically. <laughs> I have no idea. Give me a rough, um, I mean, because it's like, how many dates years. does like this online dating lifestyle generate roughly? I mean, well, as many as you want, as long as there are enough women to email. It's, you know, and, and it you're, you're probably an extreme example because you've been moving around. So, you know, like someone who went crazy in one city would eventually kind of like burn out the whole city, I guess. And you know, there wouldn't be Not no, no really, stuff. though, because huh? the, the thing to remember about online dating is that uh, the, the dating sites, they, ch- they churn, they switch out about 80 per- 80% of their members within mm. three months. Mm. So there's constantly a fresh women to email. As long as you're in a big enough city, you really should never run out of women to email. Big, yeah. yeah, two million plus multiple mm. dating sites. You, mm. yeah, I mean, and, and speaking generally, I have a lot of clients in situations like that that have been getting, you know, five, ten phone numbers a month for the yeah. past two years. Mm-hmm. You know, it, they, you don't really run out of out of women to to email and and to uh, to meet. So, yeah, and, and obviously, like when moving to new cities all the time, I, it is kind of nice to have a fresh database and just mm. build to and kind of go crazy in it and not have to pay attention to like who's new, who I've already emailed, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's at the same time, like 
it's not a game changer for for me versus another guy who's staying more permanently in in a, in a specific city. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's put a rough number on it: one hundred, two hundred, five hundred. Uh, One thousand. Well, we're talking two and a half years, so we're, you know, I, I don't do more than probably 10 to 15 dates a month. I've had months, you know, where I've been on a date almost every single day, a okay. different girl. But the thing is, that's not sustainable because mm. I am i don't like to just constantly play around. I, sure. I like to have a stable girl, and at right. some point, that ends. So that's the reason it's hard to predict. Like, in a good month, mm. I would go on almost, you know, around 30 dates a month. Right. Some days when I'd you're stack. single, yeah. Yeah, when I'm single. But other months, I don't. But, it, I mean, it's, yeah, in the last, you know, two and a half years, we're talking hundreds. How many dates do you go on typically before you find a girl that you're like, oh, you know, uh, I like this girl, I'm in a relationship? Or is that... Pr- really random or it depends on your mood more than it it depends on my mood depends how long i'm planning on staying in that city it depends yeah yeah it just depends if i was just in a relationship or not but Mm -hmm. i i really like at least one out of two of the girls that i meet wow that's pretty good uh, yeah and maybe but one out of four of them i would really want Mm. well that's that's really interesting that's something i want to get into a little bit later about like you know how you how you map the virtual world to the to the real world, and if you make any mistakes, you know, and, and when, when you're selecting women to meet and stuff. But we'll get into that into a bit. So, how many relationships have you had in your life so far? <laughs> well, can you? Oh, what really? would be a, <laughs> what would be a relationship exactly? Like oh, steady, so how do you exclusive. Exclusive. Like, Yeah, tell me how you would define a relationship, and let's just go with your definition. Oof. I mean, for me, if you know, if if you're like you know seeing a girl, you know, and you're hanging out. Um, a few times a week and, you know, it goes on for three months. That's definitely a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So three months rule. So if we're talking three months, I would probably say, you know, is this exclusive for three months or is this three months while still seeing other people? <laughs> that makes a big difference. Um, I say with, I think, being, well, I think, you know, some, some people have multiple, you know, long-term relationships and they're still relationships. That's what we call them relationships, you know? Yeah. So, so, you know, I think, I think you can include those. Yeah. Okay. I would probably say somewhere around 30, probably. Yeah, that's, 30, that's, three plus month. That's, that's a that's a lot of relationships. Yeah. I tend to I tend to have a stable girl, even if mm. I'm continuing to online date. I have mm. at least one girl over the duration of like when I'm staying somewhere that mm. I do see like constantly. Like for example, right now I do have a girl that I've been seeing for the past almost three months, but mm. she knows. And I'm I I you know I try to be as honest as possible, and yeah. uh, and she actually knows. You know, she doesn't want to know any details, but she knows. Mm. Um, she was just making jokes last night about me being really easy and you know right, right. basically always checking out girls in front of her mm-hmm. and all this stuff and she doesn't really like it but she accepts it and uh, right. and you, you know if you're dating around like I am it's pretty hard to cover it up well also if you're traveling like you are all the time I think the girls aren't you know I they're not expecting a, a really that's the other serious thing. relationship so that's part of the that's part of the appeal of what i'm doing right now for mm. me is that when relationships have a natural expiration date mm. then the you tend to the women tend to basically protect themselves a little bit more yeah. from becoming too emotionally attached right which is nice which if is you good. don't want anything yeah if you're not looking for anything long term at the moment it is kind of nice for both parties involved yeah 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 that's it's, it's like a mutual uh decision there that's good so how, ma- how many women have you slept with roughly oh god <laughs> uh i do not want to answer this question okay my mom could fine. hear this but uh yeah. yeah you know it just online dating like when you meet women mm-hmm. online it makes it so much easier for you to get kind of sexual quickly because the mm-hmm. reality is is that they feel a higher level of trust i think than a girl that you just met at a bar obviously the girl at the bar may be intoxicated at the moment but a lot of times she's mm-hmm. there with a group of friends and she's not mm-hmm. going to go home with you because she's going to look like a slut you meet a girl online you mm-hmm. meet her out one-on-one right. she already feels like she knows you if she's had you on facebook which is part of my my own personal strategy usually i do get girls on facebook and i have a really strong facebook presence because mm-hmm. it's something that i pay a lot of attention to yeah then you know the amount of social credibility it gives me and just the amount of trust that it builds her being able to see pictures of from of me for, with all of my friends my mm. family everything right. it adds a, a, another dimension of trust where she knows or at least she feels like she's knowing with and there's also who she's dealing with and there's also a, a bit of time distortion that occurs in terms of her feeling like she's right. known you possibly for longer than she has if mm. you exchange 
you know, several messages over the course of a week. Mm. Um, it's not like a girl that you just met the night before at a bar. So the reality is, is that I found that it's much easier to get sexual with women that you meet mm. online quickly yeah. than women that you meet other places, unless you're, you're dealing with a very ideal scenario right. at bars where a girl mm. is alone or she was with a friend who's also mm. with another guy or she just doesn't give a shit. Right. So it's a combination of logistics and kind of trust there. So, you know, exactly. like, as you say, she's, she's on her own and, and she's not worried about what other people think. And, and there's also, she know all this stuff about you from your profile and from your Facebook as well as you're, as you're using there. So, yeah. So, I mean, I could actually see that's kind of healthier in a way, right? Yeah. 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 Well, it works. It works out well for, mm. for us guys. That's, that's for sure. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, for her, it adds, she, she feels like she knows who she's dealing with. If right. she, something happens, it's not like she only has my cell phone number. Mm. She has my Facebook account. So, mm. you know, it hurts even of her coming back to my place. I think she mm. feels more comfortable that she could have, for example, sh send a link. And I know some girls do this. Yeah. They'll tell their friend who they're going out with, you know, mm. in case anything happens. Whereas if you just met at a bar, she doesn't even have you on Facebook or whatever. Obviously, mm. yeah, the bar you can get her on Facebook too, but most in a lot of cases we don't we don't actually go through that step as well. And online it just, it's just a lot more natural since you're already online. And mm. and so yeah, I mean it it adds definitely a level of security to the whole situation, to the whole yeah. idea of her coming back with you that you don't necessarily always get offline as easily as you do online. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Let's talk about a bit about your company and like you know who its clientele are and stuff like that because it's, it's kind of interesting. So you you know your company is basically outsourced dating. So you guys take it from you know creating a profile on an online dating site to messaging to getting the date and then you hand it off to client. Is that is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, it's mm. it's that is essentially how it works. So basically, the the easiest way to look at it is imagine that you wanted to meet women online, but mm. you either, you know, just weren't doing it already, you weren't having success, or maybe you didn't have just the time to make it successful. So what you do is you pay someone to come in, you can think of them, you know, you can think of us as consultants, whatever. We, we see what you're doing, mm. uh, we fix it, we make it all work, and then right. we do it for you. So mm. everything that you would have to do if you wanted to meet women online, mm. we do it. Okay. So, you know, we even do the back and forth messaging, mm. and we book the dates or get the phone numbers, and then all our clients have to do is just simply show up and enjoy. Okay. All right, cool. So what's the typical profile of people who are using this? You know, you said they're busy or like, no, who, who are you? Who's your typical client? Our typical client is pretty busy. Mm. Uh, you know, there, it's a mix between people who just are not having success with online dating right. and, and then guys who, you know, are having some success, but just realize that it takes a lot of time. Yeah. Kind of like my scenario that kind of led me to, mm. and you know, end up starting it myself. So mm. it's, it's, it's a mix. It, I'd say we get more guys that are on the busy side of things. Probably 65% of the guys are the busy ones and 35% are the guys that just aren't having, having any luck. Mm. And they tend to be between yeah. the ages of 28 to 43, kind of in that range. Although we do get mm. younger and we do get older, but they tend mm. to be kind of in that, uh, kind of sweet spot for single guys. And overall, yeah, I mean, they're guys that are making some money at, at work. You know, it's not a super expensive service, but it, you know, anytime you're, you're forking out, you know, in the hundreds of dollars a month plus on top of your rent, it can get expensive quickly. And uh, so our, our clients tend to, you know, make upper five figures and above. And and so they're pretty, you know, fairly successful guys that like women want to meet more women and either don't have the time to do it themselves or don't necessarily want to learn the skills to meet them online that it takes to, to do it successfully. Most of our clients are, you know, they're either stri time strapped or right, don't right. have the skills to make it successful. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So like I read in the Huffington Post, I think it was August 2011 that you had around 30 clients. How many do you have today? Right now, it, it varies from month to month, but mm. we have had, are around 100 clients a month. Okay, yeah, that's a fair number. How many dates has your company set up for people? Do you know? Is this something you've, you know, that would be an interesting statistic. Yeah, yeah, it's in, I don't know the exact number. Mm. I have to, it's in our, it's in a system and I could extract it. Yeah. But it, we're, we've got to be in the tens of thousands by wow. now. It's, we've been doing this since 2009, setting mm. up a lot of dates per month. And yeah, you know, a lot of what we deliver is phone numbers too. So it's sometimes hard to know exactly yeah. what a client does with a phone number once we give it to them. But right. including phone numbers, yeah, we're, we're getting up there in the, got to be in the tens of thousands. Cool, cool. So when I was doing research about your, your company, I saw in the media in terms of response and reaction to it, which, you know, I guess, I guess you can see, right? So I saw a bit of bad press from Jezebel, 
Com. And I saw some more positive stuff from Huffington Post and some others. What, what are the kind of different types of reactions that you get for this service? Well, you know, I think a lot of, there, there are two big misconceptions about the service that we have. And mm. one of them is that, you know, the guys are, are just lazy. So a, a lot of our clients are, are men. And it's mm. pretty obvious when you look at our website that we're mainly targeting men. Mm. So women, you know, and that's the reason Jezebel was, was so negative is women think it's just a bunch of lazy guys that just don't want to lift yeah. a finger mm. and uh, do anything themselves. But really, it's it's about making your time more, making the best use of your time. You know, mm. these aren't guys that are lazy. These are guys that prefer to be doing other more productive stuff mm. than sitting around online dating sites all day. Right. And the other big misconception is in terms of, it comes from a lot of people that don't really know online dating, and they mm. assume that we're sending a lot of long, like, love letter type, you know, mm. long emails, drawn out messages, and we're sending lots of messages online. So in their mind, we're building false relationships, mm. which is which is really, really untrue. If anyone that's done a lot of online dating knows that it's pretty surface level. You're just exchanging this basic information, sending a few messages, and things happen pretty fast. If you know what you're doing, I mean, there's a lot of guys that are afraid to pull the trigger, and maybe they, mm. they just send a lot of back and forth messages and don't get anywhere with the women. But really, the most effective strategy is a really quick and, and uh, you know, short messages, you know, not too many of them, and pulling the trigger. And that's what mm. we do. So, you know, that misconception is also false. We're simply facilitating in-person introductions, and we're doing it as if efficiently and effectively as possible and any guy could take what we do and they could do it themselves right, you know i've right. got the product that teaches guys how to do it themselves and they, they mm -hmm. could but uh, it just depends how you want to spend your time and i think a lot of our clients are, are smart to be making you know that yeah. kind of decision about how what their time's worth and where they want to be spending it and so you know i think the misconceptions largely come from people that don't really right. know what they're talking about is tends to happen yeah so that course you were just talking about was click click magnet dating system which we just recently reviewed and we thought was pretty damn cool which is why i got you on here um, yeah, 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 that's the one. So, what, I mean, what kind of positive press do you get? We get, we do get a lot. I mean, we've gotten a lot of write-ups from, you know, reporters that came in. And for mm. example, we had a, a guy from a, uh, a publication called Urban Daddy. They're like, a, yeah, they yeah. they do like in basically it's like an email magazine type thing. Mm. And they came in, they try out the service, and he loved it. You know, mm. and so we get reporters. The reporters that tend to write the best stuff are the ones that actually get to know us and, right. uh, and talk to us. The ones like Jezebel, I mean, we never talked to them. They never asked us about how right, things work. Right. They just wrote a, a scathing article. So. Right, just, just, to get, just to get something straight. Do you do this for women as well or just guys? We do this for women as well. Mm. We initially, we, uh, we, we targeted men and we decided, oh mm. man, we're leaving so much money on the table. We got to you know, basically right. change our marketing and, mm. and make it gender neutral. And then we realized over time that even when it was gender neutral, about 80% of our clients were men anyways. And mm. so you have the whole 80, 20 rule. Why focus on you know, right. so much energy on that mm. market that's only giving you 20% of revenue anyways. Yeah. So we refocused our marketing back on men. We have a women's site, quote unquote, that you can click on. But most of what we do now mm. is, is with men. Yeah. Well, I guess mostly it's, it's men who kind of do the messaging. So uh, that kind of yeah, makes more, more sense for the business model just because of the natural way things are. Okay, man. So let, let's talk a little bit about like the online dating service as well, because I'm, I'm sure you know this really, really well. Which are the best sites to use and why? Well, <sighs> the... Uh, it depends what you're looking for, obviously, and I hate to give a vague question, but mm. in general, I do tend to stick with the mainstream sites for mm. myself and all of our clients. So, and and it depends, you know, obviously what country you're in, but two of the one, two that are really big, no matter where you are, mm. are Plenty of Fish. It's the biggest dating property in the world. Mm. The strictly dating site. The other one is OK Cupid. is pretty big in a lot of international countries mm. as well. So, mm -hmm. th those are two really great sites. Match.com is also a good one for guys in the U.S. Mm. If you're in you know, I, I don't use these sites myself, but I've mm. got a lot of clients that use them. If if you're open to the idea of de meeting girls that are interested in you uh, for your money that you either have or you don't have, you don't really have to have it. Yes. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. really checking your your income statements. But uh, MillionaireMash.com can be a good site. SugarDaddy.com can be a good site if you uh, you know want to have some fun with some girls that are looking to be spoiled. But you definitely you definitely don't have to spoil them before you get sexual. So um, mm. I've heard of guys doing that as well. If you're 
religious guy, Christian Mingle can be a great site, or mm. you know, if you're Jewish, J Date can be a great site. So, but Plenty of Fish actually is full of a lot of women who aren't that attractive, but the ones that are do tend to respond at a pretty high rate. So we've mm. found that we get an extremely high response rate on mm. Plenty of Fish, and then OK Cupid is the second mainstream. So we we like to focus on those two. And the great thing about those two sites mm. is they're both free, mm. and you can get great results on them without spending a dime. Okay. Yeah, just a few you didn't mention there that I know are also big is like Badu, Zeusk, and eHarmony. What's your opinion on those? Yeah, yeah, sure. So Badu is, you know, mainly, uh, ba- Badu is a site that I spend a lot of time on. Okay. And okay. the reason I spend a lot of time on it is because it's, it is technically not a dating site. I said Plenty of Fish is the da- biggest dating site in the world. Technically it's not, but in all intensive practices, it actually is. So they don't market hmm. it as a dating site. They'd market it as kind of like a social network or oh, they call it social discovery. I actually thought it was a dating site. You know? it, well, in the mar- I don't know, in the marketing, I got mixed up somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, they have they keep it a lot more neutral. And mm-hmm. and there's a good reason for that because they, they, tend to, they tended to do really well in markets where online dating still carried a pretty big stigma. Mm. And so it, you find that Badu is really popular in, um, you know, basically Latin American countries, in, mm. um, you know, Eastern European countries. It's even popular in a lot of European countries mm. like France, Italy, Germany. It's pretty popular. But the reality is it was, it's not that big in the U.S. U.S. Mm. is one of the places where online dating caught on the fastest and mm. is the biggest, uh, probably is still the biggest online dating market in the world. And it right now you know it, it just ha- never really became that popular it can work well hmm. if you're in a big city like new york or san francisco <laughs> you, you know chicago maybe miami miami could be good because there are a lot of latin women yeah. but it, it tends to even in those cities attract kind of the women that are from countries hmm. where it's more popular so you know even if you're in new york if you want to meet some latin chicks that you know recently moved to new york or maybe some some Russian women or whatever, mm. you know, Badu could be attracting some of those women. It's worth checking out. Because uh, they've um, been using it in their home country, you mean? Yeah, right. yeah, they've been using it in their home country. Mm. They're just familiar with the site. But yeah, yeah, Americans in general don't really know Badu that well, but mm. it is a hu- huge site on a world scale. Mm. So Yeah, it's I, worth I, I saw like a huge number. I can't remember what it was now, but they have a, a lot of people on that site. Maybe they're not yeah, all active. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a Facebook, right? Yeah, it's kind of so like a Facebook. It's chat-based. So, mm. you know, it's... It's becoming more and more popular as mm. a mobile app, and okay. and so people are using it as kind of a chat site. So the the communications happen fast, unlike mm. more traditional dating sites where there can be delays between messages of a day, two days, right. whatever. That's normal. Mm. Badu, it's like you know, it's almost like you're live chatting. So mm. it, it everything happens fast. It can be kind of time consuming, but the key is for mm. Badu is to try to get women to check you out and to rate you and whatever mm. without doing much first, or just focus only on the women that are online now. There's no point in messaging women that aren't online now because of just the nature of it being a chat site. So mm. what I tend to do on Badu, which is cool, and I recommend doing it for any site where you at least testing it for any site where it's possible, and even right. on OkCupid, right. this is possible now. You can pay mm. a little bit of money, like a couple dollars, and they'll either, there are three different ways you can, you can use it right now, and this could change over time, but you can pay for them to put you at the very top of the site in something they call Spotlight. Mm. You can also pay for them to push you up in the search results. Yep. And you can also pay for them. They've got it. I know a lot of guys are getting more and more familiar with Tinder, which is a, a really popular mobile app right now where you just mm. swipe women to the left if you don't like them, swipe them to the right if you do like them. And if there's a match, yep. then you're notified. You can message each other. They're Badu and even OkCupid, okay, they're adopting this concept into mm. their site. And so you, on Badu, you can pay for increased exposure. So lately, mm. I've been getting lots of matches that way where mm. basically they're showing my picture to more women and then they'll, by having something called superpowers, which costs a right. little money too, mm-hmm. you can pay attention. So um, Badu is a free site, but I do recommend testing out some of the stuff. I've found that boosting yourself in the search engine doesn't do much, but some of the other stuff is really, really cool and can boost your results. And then you just focus on women that are online now. You have a couple copy and paste templates. Mm. Um, you, I ideally test a few, see what works, and then you'll end up with a couple that work really well. And you can get great results on it. It is a good site, but for our American guys that are in the U.S., it's something maybe worth looking into, but uh, there are probably better sites. 
Right, right. You had mentioned and uh, Zusk was another one. I Zusk, think. oof, Zusk is terrible. Oh yeah, I recommend staying away from Zusk. I haven't used it in a while. Maybe they've made improvements hmm. to their site, but if you look at just, um, for example, if you look on, there's a site called AppAnnie.com. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, and uh, what App Annie does, it's it's a site where you can kind of see how much, approximately how popular different mobile apps are and the different scoring, and mm. so you'll see that it's a popular app. A lot of people are downloading it, but if you look at the score, it's getting a two out of five. And wow. none of the other apps mm -hmm. that I know of are getting such low scores on their app. And I think it's yeah. two reasons. First, probably their app kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen, it does. And second of all, it's because their site in general sucks. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they've changed it, but for a long time, you couldn't even see, you couldn't even sort the users by last login date. Mm -hmm. And that's a recipe for an online dating mm -hmm. failure. So right. I don't recommend Zeus. I think they've not provided a good platform for the mm. users historically, and I don't trust that that's going to change. So it's okay. not a site that I recommend. All right. So you've been talking a lot about mobile apps. So you're using mobile apps of all of these all of these sites, and that's what you recommend doing? Like, talk a little bit about yeah. the versus yeah. like, using the web versus a mobile app. Well, I, either one's fine, really. Mm. And we mainly use web for our, for our customers, but things are mm. becoming more and more mobile, mm -hmm. and it's going to continue to happen. And recently, I was at, at a conference for the internet dating industry, and the founder of Plenty of Fish said that about 82% of their users right now are accessing their database via mobile apps. So mm. what's That's happening, huge. yeah, it's huge. It's a huge, huge shift. And the, the, what that means for us as guys that want to meet women online is that things are going to continue to get more more and more quick because yeah. when people are dealing with their mobile phones, they tend to be more responsive. They treat it a little more like text messaging. Yep. So messages get shorter and response times get quicker. Okay. And we're seeing that with, with the online dating sites now, and it's something that's important that you know we and all the users of the dating sites, they, they adjust for quickly. Okay, so do you think like if you're not responding quickly, like I'm just out of interest, like at this point, like so if you're not responding quickly because you're kind of not going with the times, is that is that going to hurt you? Yeah, 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 it is. You know, the, the the biggest thing is just the easiest way to kind of conceptualize this is online dating is very momentum based. So mm -hmm. basically these women are just getting blasted by so many guys on the dating sites. Yeah. Some of them they're finding attractive. They like some of them. So you've just got a lot of competition at all times. Mm -hmm. her, you know, her attention spans short. So mm -hmm. she's going to be, if, if her level of interest goes up and then you don't, you know, she responds quickly and then you don't respond till the next day. So much can happen between mm -hmm. that last message she sent and whatever, right. you know, another guy that really looks really interesting could have captured her interest in that mm. time you know she could have met someone online dating happens fast so you have to be pretty quick or it really does hurt your your chances especially as things become quicker and quicker like on tinder for example yeah you've got to move fast and you got to get numbers super fast you can't mm. have one day delays between messages like you can on dating sites you can still do it on dating sites now but in you know maybe in a year from now it's going to be more like tinder where people are real quick sorry so you said tinder is that that's a that's a new social networking site for the young Younger crowd, is that correct? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call it a social network. It's a dating app, but okay. it's it's a very basic dating app in the hmm. sense that you all you're doing is it's a very simple structure. You 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 swipe to the right or swipe to the left. If you like a girl's photo, okay. you swipe to the right. If you don't, you swipe to the left. So hmm. it means as guys, our 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 main you know our photos and especially our main photo hmm. are extremely 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 important. And there are ways to take more attractive photos. And you've got to make sure you've got really solid photos. You're going to get results on it. But it's kind of a new direction where we're being extremely superficial, yep. but in a way that kind of makes sense. Mm. And so, you know, just because a girl swipes you right doesn't mean she actually likes you and wants to meet you and hook up mm. with you. It just means that you're relatively attractive enough that she would consider talking to you. And at that point, you've got to, if you, she swipes to the right and then you swipe to the right, then you get, you get matched. Yeah. And then you're able to message her. So it's a closed database oh. where you can't message someone unless you've been matched on based on a mutual right swipe. That's, that, I mean, I guess that saves a lot of time, right? And a lot of wasted effort from the yeah, guy's it perspective. It yeah. does. It is a, a, Tinder is by far the best mobile dating app that's mm -hmm. ever hit the market. And especially for us younger guys, it's, it makes a lot of sense yeah. because it is pretty time efficient. Like mm -hmm. you don't waste time sending messages to lots of women that aren't going to respond. You yeah. simply swipe right real fast. Yep. And sometimes I'll do it like extremely fast. Once you get it down, just like, 
swipe, 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 swipe. You know, it, it does make for, for a pretty quick screening process. Mm -hmm. But again, like I said, if you don't have strong photos and it doesn't matter so much what you look like, I've got photos. I do a lot of photo scoring. I've got photos that if I use them, they would make me look 50% less attractive or more, mm -hmm. you know? So it may be, and regularly I'm a six and a half or a seven. I don't know how to, I'm not really rating myself, but these apps would kind of make me believe that. Right. And so I could be like below a five on, mm -hmm. with a bad photo because, mm -hmm. you know, 4.75 or something because it's just a poorly taken photo and a lot of guys are making that same mistake and just not right they think oh well I'm, i am what i am i can't change mm -hmm. that well you can definitely change how attractive you look in photos right so it sounds like you're saying in the on these apps they give you scores if you do you have to do you have to let them score you or there's or do all of them score you and give you a rating for your photo so you can kind of tell you can you can find out if your photo is not good enough Yeah, yeah, you can. There's mm. there are a couple apps that I could tell you about. There's one of them is My Best Face. It's by OkCupid. Okay right. The other one is bad is Badu, which is a site we were just talking about. They do mm. photo scoring as well. My favorite one is is My Best Face though because I trust the results more. Mm. The reality is that there's no perfect sco photo scoring app out there. Even OkCupid's okay My Best Face yeah. gives a yeah. certain level of variation between your scores. Like so, if you put one photo in the same report two or three times, mm. you're going to see that the scores can be quite different. Different. Like, are you talking like a five and a seven different, or, in or is some it cases, like, yes. or is it six and seven? Huh? In some cases, five and seven different. Wow. Um, so you can't really trust one score, but the reality mm. is, if you let's say you know each photo, if you were to run it six times, which if you're right. only talking five photos, isn't going to take that long. Mm. If you're talking ten, fifteen photos, that takes a lot of time to do. Mm. Um, so you have to decide how much time you're willing to invest into gathering you know, the best data that you can around your yep. photos. But in mm -hmm. my, my case, I mean, recently I did my best face, a serious analysis. I started with like 70 photos. I ran them each twice. I had an assistant do it. Mm -hmm. I narrowed those down to like 35. Then I, and I did, ran those <laughs> twice again. Then I narrowed that down to like the top wow. 17, like kind of cut them out again. And then I ran mm -hmm. another two times, narrowed that down to like the top 10 and then ran like the top 10 another two times. So that's extremely hardcore. And I don't mm -hmm. necessarily recommend that you do that. Well, how important is the photo on online dating? It's huge, right? What would you say is it's like the percentage? Important. Is it 80%? Of, of the thing or, you know? Um, no, I wouldn't call it 80%. Mm -hmm. I would call it maybe 50%. Okay, 50%, 50, 50, 50 photos. 50, yeah, 50%. Yeah. So you I would say 50% photos, um, 30% messages, mm -hmm. uh, 20% profile text. Okay. What are the biggest mistakes with photos that make them lower rating? Like, have you seen, you've obviously seen patterns from all your testing and everything. What would you say the worst things to have in photos? One thing that a lot of guys do mm -hmm. um, is they just... Well, the number one problem is they just don't take enough photos and mm. they, you know, just kind of have four or five options and try to choose the best. Okay. So right. they're, they're not, if you take a hundred photos, believe me, you're going to get way luckier one of the times than mm. you do in the others. Mm. <laughs> you know, we all get lucky every once in a while when it comes to photos. I've got photos that I look horrendous in. I've got others that I look really good in. And the reason I have that wide range is because I've taken lots of photos. And so mm. the number one thing guys aren't doing is just taking enough photos. Take, you know, I mean, I, I, even our iPhones now take good enough photos yeah. that it's yeah. not call it causing serious quality issues with pixelation or whatever. So you you should just be t taking your phone out more and using it more, just making a conscious effort to take more photos. The next thing that a lot of guys do is they they just don't have photos that like the the main thing is your main photo. You're going to want it to just make sure you look really as attractive as possible. Yeah. Yep. After that, you've got to have photos that paint a picture. So mm. they've got to kind of display who it is that you are as an exciting alpha male, right? So mm. you, we just don't have enough variation in our photos. We're not doing enough interesting stuff. Maybe it's because we don't have a lot of interesting stuff going on in our lives, but mm. uh, the anyone can even kind of frame uh, these kind of interesting things. You can, I was just, I just did a professional photo shoot at a park and I really wanted to take a photo with a dog, okay? okay. The photographer, I asked him to bring his dog because I saw a picture of it on, online. And uh -huh. I said, bring your dog. He showed up without his dog. I was like, come on, man. I asked you to bring your dog. You said you would. He's like, sorry, you know, something, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm at the park and this really, really attractive dog comes by. And I'm okay. like, oh, dog, dog's cute. So I tell the owner, hey, can I get him for a couple pictures? Just one minute, one minute. 
Mm. He's like, okay, sure, sure. So, you know, I've got, and this isn't like necessarily an interesting thing, but I'm just showing how I've, I've framed a specific, and all the girls, and this is my main picture now, and it mm. scored really well in the testing that I did. I got this picture with this really, really, really good looking dog. And, mm. you know, I'm in, in a park, I'm on one knee and I'm petting it. And it's all happy. Mm. And it builds a, a lot of trust into my profile. Guys that dogs like are more trustworthy. And a lot of girls on Tinder, they tell me, hey, I, I swiped right because of the dog, you know? Okay. But anyways, I'm talking to them, I'm saying funny stuff, and they're loving me anyways. Mm. But the thing is, is like, you can you can create scenarios. Mm. You can, um, you, they just have to look natural, you know? If you've got a mountain bike or whatever, you can go out and you can have one of your buddies take a couple mountain bike pictures of you. Just don't freaking pose and look at the camera and like flex your muscle while you're on your mountain mm -hmm. bike because that's mm -hmm. going to look really cheesy. But if it looks natural, like if it looks like a real situation, just like yeah. the dog does, yeah. then it's, you know, it's going to create a element mm -hmm. of, you know, interesting lifestyle to yeah. your profile. Like you do fun, interesting stuff and you want mm -hmm. just to communicate other things besides hey, you know, I, I wear, you know, wife beaters in my bathroom and take pictures in front of my mirror, which yeah. a lot of guys are doing, which is obviously one of the huge mistakes, the whole, like, shot in front of the mirror thing. So you want to get out of your house mm. interest, into interesting situations and capture them. And if you're not in enough of those naturally, there are ways to just set them up. Just make mm. them happen mm. and make them look natural and women will believe them. Yeah. Well, that's so, so your point. Uh, your your point on you should be you know taking pictures of your phone all the time that that's the main thing i mean hopefully you guys guys are building their lifestyles and they're doing more stuff in their life as well so uh, if if you have to you know you can start off like you know by taking setting up these pictures but it's best if you know you're you're taking pictures all the time and you've got this cool stuff that's actually going yes. on in your life and if you know if you're not having fun stuff in your life you should be because you know we only live once so like get yeah, out there and yeah, have fun sure. and take some pictures of it and your online dating will go better too I wanted to look here at like just touch on the adult and the casual hookup sites because I know that you know in the online dating industry these are the money makers now these are the kind of the big growth sites because you see them all on Facebook the ads and everywhere so I just wanted your take on that like I know that some of the bigger ones are Be Naughty Adult Friend Finder and Fling have you got any you know opinions or or, or ideas on those sites Yeah yeah sure so I've, my experience with those sites and I you know I try to keep clients away from it actually and and the reason is is because They tend to attract a lot more men than women. Mm. If you look at the, you know, the statistics of the right. traffic right. that's going to these sites, mm. these sites are, you know, basically doing lots of advertising on like porn sites and places where got horny guys tend to congregate. Mm. And it's basically a money maker for them. They, they, you know, they bring in guys with the promise of there being lots of attractive women that just yeah. want to fuck them. Obviously. Uh, the most attractive women, they don't have to go to a site to get laid. They just go to a yeah. bar yeah. and see a cute guy mm. and wink at him, and then it's the rest is, is done, you know? Mm. So my experience with those sites has been, hey, if you've got a girl who's open to the idea of threesomes or whatever, you've got some negotiating power to bring in um, another girl, you know, mm. maybe a bisexual girl that wants to have threesomes. You've got mm. a unique... You've got some kind of unique pull on these sites. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. you can get results. But mm. if you're just coming in as yet another single horny guy, mm. it's going to be hard for you to get really mm. good results. I mean, I'm sure guys out there are, but they're mm. probably really good looking guys that are still spending a lot of time on it. Right. My general take is like, hey, you know, they did a uh, study not too long ago, and these you know, studies are obviously up for debate, you know, what the sample size was or whatever. But the, basically the study, it was by like the National Institute for Sexuality Research, something like that. But they did a study and found that about two thirds of the, it was 60, I don't know if it was right, 66, but I think it was 60% of online dates end in some kind of sexual intercourse, first dates, first dates. So hmm. my, my, my thing, it depends what country you're in for me, but when I'm in the, when I'm in the U S for example, I hook up on at least half the dates, probably closer to 70%. Wow. So the, the reality is, is that if, if you want sex, like I said before, hmm. why not just go to a regular dating site, get more hmm. dates right. and just try to hook up more, more quickly with right. the girls from dating sites. I mean, the, you take a girl out to drinks and you work on, you know, it's not like I was always a great first date. I used to suck on first dates. I used to get drunk, not hmm. drunk, but I used to have some drinks before every first date just to loosen me up. Hmm. Now I take a girl out for coffee and there's a good chance I can hook up with her in the daytime, you know? Hmm. Um, hmm. But so the, the reality is you're going to get better at dating and 
why not just focus on on dating and trying to hook up with women from regular dating sites right. rather than trying to go to these sites that are just filled with basically dudes. Right, right. right. So you're saying the demographics are way way more in your favor. On yeah, yeah. Dating sites just way easy. Uh, you know, I just mm. think that in the time you spend on an adult site trying to hook up with one girl, you could easily mm. have right. five to ten in person dates. And if you can hook up with, you know, even twenty five percent of those, you're still getting a better return mm. on your your investment yeah. than yeah. you than you are on these uh, these adult right. sites. Right. Well, there's two things there. Like we haven't really talked about kind of like the whole perspective of this because you've talked about like you know you should pay for the sites to basically get to meet women more easily, get ranked and so on, right? In, in some of these sites. And, you know, whereas I think that a lot of people go to those sites, they're thinking, and you know, it's free. But, you know, your whole approach to this is, uh, is very focused on time, which is kind of like the proposition behind your company and, and, and everything. So could you talk a little bit about like your kind of mindset towards this? And, you know, so guys can tell if like, oh, this is, this is something the way I should be thinking or not. Yeah, yeah, sure. So the general way that I see that you should, you should approach this is that you should look purely from a ROI perspective, meaning your mm. time is your investment and mm. you want to make sure that you get the, the, the best return on that possible. And so there are certain ways that I found and it takes uh, through a lot of trial and error that have really increased my ROI on my time. So mm. uh, one of those things is the kind of advertising approach, just getting a max number of eyeballs to your profile in the quickest amount of time possible. So mm. I've you know done created some kind of automation things that go through and just like, you know, do, do things like check out women's profiles that are already rated on OkCupid as four or five star, just basically goes through them real quick. So then they'll check you out back. And if they check you out back, your response rate more than doubles. I mean, we push response rates up to almost 70, 70 to 80% with uh, women that check out our profiles. Mm. And so there are certain things you can do just to kind of pull the women out of the woodworks that are more most likely to respond to you so you mm -hmm. can you can get a, a much higher response rate in less time and this is one of the strategies I'm talking about like with Badu if you can get pay a couple bucks and it basically it gives you priority views mm. of your picture for the tinder type left or, or right swipe to mm. 100 women so yes. let's say you know 20 of those swipe you right and you're actually interested in seven of them mm. you just paid two dollars to get seven women delivered in your inbox that are interested in you right and you're going to get a way higher response rate on those women than if you go out mm. on your own and just start blasting random women with messages in general i get a high mm. response rate on bad do with cold messages too but for yeah. me it's worth that two dollars to save you know 30 minutes of time mm. because my time's worth more than four dollars an hour obviously as i'm sure everybody listening to this your time's worth more than four dollars an hour so if you can increase the amount of return and the other approach that we do is a lot of guys the other main application is a lot of guys are sending customized messages to women mm. on dating sites mm. and it's a bad idea and the reason is is because you can send out messages so much faster if they're not customized and mm. there's certain tricks you can use to make them even seem customized if she has a short profile mm. write a message for that if she you can do advanced searches in the different sites for yeah. words like skiing and mm. you can just identify all the profiles in one search that either by selecting skiing like match.com has an interest list you can check a box that mm. shows like skiing in it or you can just do an advanced search and put in a keyword on like okay cube it doesn't have that box but you can just do a keyword search. And so the results are going to show all the women with skiing in their profile. So mm. you create one message for that about skiing and you can make some kind of joke about, you know, whether they're the one, you know, they're basically, I don't know, the ones that are tumbling down the bunny slopes if they're zooming down Black Diamond, something like that. Mm. And just playful teasing email and just kind of, you know, challenging her a little bit, see where their skill level's at. And you create a template like that and you can just, all, you know, let's say you have 100 women with that that uh, skiing in their profile, then it's copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And do you really think that going and reading each of those profiles and trying mm. to find something else that's unique in it besides the word skiing mm. is going to double your response rate? I guarantee it's not going to double your response rate. It might mm. even, in a lot of cases, lower your response rate because by sending different emails to every woman, you can't test. You can't see what's most effective mm. and what's not. And one of the beautiful things about a template-based approach is testing is simple. How many times did you send it? You sent it 30 times. How many responses did you get? 
get? You right. got three responses. You got a 10% response rate on that template. How did you do on the other template? You compare your response rates, then you prioritize your templates. You yeah. get rid of the ones that aren't working. And f if you are doing this type of approach, you can send out a message every couple of minutes. The mm. couple of minutes you're going to spend is the searching. But usually mm. if you're reading profiles, you're going to be lucky to send a message out every 20 minutes if you're actually yeah. reading profiles and customizing messages. So all of a sudden you're doing things 10 times faster mm. and your response rate isn't changing much. It might even be improving because you're being more systematic yeah. and really paying attention to what's working and what's not. So that's the general approach we take. You know, we used mm. to send customized messages. It was a huge waste of time. But as we got better and better, we started to realize that we'd start doing semi-customized emails. Mm. And we realized, hey, we're getting just as good a response rate on these. We're just customizing some small parts of the emails. And then we're like, hell, why can't we just have fully customized or fully pre-written emails, fully templated, mm. and see how that does. And we started testing it, and we saw that the most important metric, which I haven't really explained this way, but mm. let's talk about ROI, ROI but mm. the most important metric when it comes to the initial icebreaker email when you're breaking the ice is something that I call time per positive response. How long, how many minutes does it take you to generate a response from a woman that's interested enough to write you back? And dating right. site, a mere response is, is a large indicator of interest. So, you know, if you can kind of monitor that to some, to some extent, if, if that's your focus, you will get much better response rates on, on much better results on dating sites if you take that approach rather than most guys are taking a very response rate centric approach where right. their main concern is how, what percentage of women are responding when that mm. really doesn't matter that much as long as you've got mm. a big database. Mm. Right. Okay. So, you know, I'm glad we're talking about the data because this is like the, one of the really interesting things I thought, you know, we get you on for because we love data gets us closer to the truth, right? It makes it a bit more scientific. And I know that's like what you've been focused on. So that, that's really cool. So like, could you give us some kind of benchmarks from, you know, your company just to give us an idea of what are your main metrics? You've brought up one, one is time per uh, response. The first response from a girl that you've messaged is that like the, the main one? Yeah, that's that's the most important metric mm. that we track. So a good time for positive response for us would be about seven to eight minutes per per response. Okay, so how many, roughly how because of the way you do it efficiently, how many how many messages have you written to get that? Yeah, I mean our response rates. Mm. It depends on the on the on the on the template, but right now we're averaging around twenty six percent response rate. So a little mm. bit higher than one out of four women will res respond. Okay. Remember, these are all copy and paste messages. We're doing zero customization, right. mm -hmm. and we're still getting responses from one out of four women that actually interest our clients. So mm -hmm. they tend to be as attractive or more attractive mm -hmm. than the client is. Like it, This is interesting to discuss, because if there's guys out there right now and they're online dating, and they can start to track some of their responses, then you know if you're saying you get 26% you know, response rate, and they're getting 5%, they can think, okay, I'm probably not doing something right here. Is that a fair... Yeah, yeah, if you're getting anything below a 10% response rate, I don't care who you are. I mean, right. we have really, really difficult clients. Yeah. And yeah. if they get below a 10% response rate, it's a big red flag for us. So mm. if you're below 10%, it's, it, it probably start, most likely it starts with the photos. Mm. And then it, 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 you're doing every, basically, if you're low, below 10%, you're probably doing everything kind of mm. wrong. But it, you know, the biggest thing that we see is it starts with photos and we work right. with clients to fix mm. those. Okay, so you do the, the, so you do, you're doing the time, time to uh, res response. What about like actual dates? Like how, how many messages do you send? Like how long has it taken? And, and how many dates do you get for each message or time or whatever metric you're looking at? We're getting a, um, so we're getting like a 25% response rate on the initial email. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's somewhere between 33 to 50% of those should turn into a offline interaction, meaning a phone number or a date, okay. right? So you're basically going to cut so you're that saying in like rough, so, maybe 10%? Yeah, 10 to 12%. It's like that gives, that gives guys a, a, pr a pretty good idea there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good benchmark. Mm. You know, the, the average guy is, is performing much lower than that. And, yeah. uh, you know, personally, I, I actually can do a little bit higher than that myself, but it's, mm. it's harder to do back and forth emailing, frankly, when you're not doing it for yourself. If you yeah. really do know what you're doing, mm. you, we can perform better than most of our clients, even though of course. We're, we're doing it for them. But I don't, I don't think everyone wants to spend, uh, how many years have you been doing this? <laughs> like your experience is, uh, is, is definitely ahead of the curve and most guys aren't going to have, you know, be, be able to do that. So you, you're going to perform uh, you know, ahead of the curve, no matter what, but, you know, to get, we're looking at reasonable benchmarks here. So this is differ for each platform or is this pretty much across the board, very similar? Like, like if you go on plenty of fish or okay, Cupid or match or, or, you know, 
Is it different? Yeah, it is different. It is different. Like, for example, the difference, I think on Plenty of Fish, we were averaging like a little bit higher than that, like 27% on OK Cupid was our second better of the three. And yep. I think we we're at like 24% or something. And then on Match, we were 19%. Hmm. You know, I think our, sometimes the quality could be a little bit better on Match. We still are using it. We still like Match a lot. Yep. But, you know, the, the results do vary from site to site. And one thing that's actually a very big recommendation of mine, I'm super into testing and tracking. And one of the things that I teach that guys should keep track of is mm -hmm. the response rate across different sites. So the easiest thing is just the response rate. You could track it to the date and you could do a, you know, basically a email to, to date conversion. But, you know, that's getting nitty gritty. The, the initial response rate is really the easiest high level thing to track. And what you can do is simply, you know, track what I was saying for the messages where I send X messages and I've gotten X responses. Just keep track of that for the different dating site. Use Roman numerals if you want. Whatever is easier, use an Excel spreadsheet and just keep track of how many times you sent each email and how many responses mm. that, you're, that you're getting and uh, for each of the sites. So because we find that it's actually kind of hard to predict sometimes what site's going to work better for a client. We have a client that can kick ass on Plenty of Fish and suck on Match for whatever mm. reason. You know, his you, response but You, you, you haven't seen a pattern there yet. It's hard. I mean, mm. of course, we there are some patterns that are somewhat predictable, but there are always mm. surprises, you know? Mm. I mean, like, you know, okay, Qubit tends to, you know, go a little bit young. If we have, like, a younger, more, like, hipster-style client, like, more yep. laid-back, artsy type, mm. yeah, okay, Cupid in general does tend to work better, but we've mm. had surprises along the way. So, and a lot of times it's hard, it is hard to predict. So, I recommend just, you know, trying a few different sites, keeping track of your response rate on each site, and then once you kind of have enough data, you know, let's say, you've sent 70 emails on each site and you are getting a 10% response rate on one site, a 15% response rate on another, and a 25% mm -hmm. on another, you might just want to focus on the 25% site until you run out mm -hmm. of women to email if that ever happens right. and then switch to the 15%. Is there is there an age skew to the platforms? Like, I don't know, is OkCupid younger or... I don't. Okay, Cupid's you? younger. Match is a little bit older mm. and like more kind of the professional crowd. Mm. Plenty of fish uh, is a little bit of everything. I don't know that I would put it as like a younger and older thing. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it depends. Uh, there are obviously a lot of other sites out there. And like Tinder, like I mentioned before, is like super young. Right. It's a kind of a, the closest thing to. A, and we were talking actually about hookups. And I should have mentioned this, but Tinder is like kind of like a hookup app. It's known okay. as being. Okay. All right, right. Casuals. So, like, I know this from the gay world. Like, I got a couple of gay friends, and they have things like Gaydar, and as well as actually a whole bunch of apps. And, you know, the stories that, I mean, these, if you, if you don't know those apps, they're pretty crazy. I mean, it's just got this GPS on it, and, you know, you'll be in a bar somewhere, and you check out the photos and stuff, and you say, I want to hook up with someone who's within 10 meters distance from you, or maybe across the road, and they pretty much just get together. So, it's, it's kind of, it sounds like, um, you know, Tinder is kind of following in the footsteps of those apps, which appeared maybe three years ago. I don't know if you know more about this than me. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the main one is uh, is Grinder. That's the okay. main, like, gay dating app. Hmm. And Tinder is is very, very similar in some ways to Grinder. So, yeah, Tinder is your GPS-based, super, you know, highly superficial, tends to lead to hookups more than anything. And if you just saw, like, the kind of messages that I sent on Tinder versus OkCupid, okay mm. you would immediately see the difference in my strategy. Tinder right. is mo a lot more, like, I, you know, have messages on Tinder that mm. talk about, you know, grabbing a bottle of whiskey and, you know, basically going halvesies on, like, a bottle of whiskey and a bastard child before next weekend. Mm. Um, it's really, really, I mean, I use, like, really over-the-top crazy stuff that, like, could easily offend people that's very sexual like a lot mm. of very like sexual stuff mm. and i use that and on online dating sites that would be like nobody's gonna i mean you would right. never so it's it's uh it's it's kind of like people with different motivations and also different kind of like levels of openness or on on these different things and different seriousness right so like if someone's looking for a serious relationship versus you know a hookup so it sounds like tinder is like more of the hookup side is okay cupid somewhere in the middle and like, what's on the more serious side? If you're like, I don't know, if you're, you want to get married or you just want a serious girlfriend? You're right about where you place everything so far. Mm. Match.com is going to be a little bit further on the serious side. And then yep. like the extreme 
is your eHarmony and maybe chemistry, which isn't mm. uh, neither of which are favorite sites of ours. Mm. But yeah, when we have a really serious client, if a guy tells us, you know, he's really looking to settle down and get yep. married, you know, soon, mm -hmm. then it's that's when we're like, okay, maybe it makes sense to use eHarmony for this guy because okay. that is where the the serious people congregate. And yeah, mm -hmm. the, you know, these that's the main thing. I mean, all mm -hmm. these different dating sites, they're kind of I like to think of them as like, kind of like cultures. And mm -hmm. so there's certain things that are that are their cultural norms, like in terms of like profile length and message length, and mm -hmm. and there's just certain things that are consistent would be considered weird on those sites mm. and unacceptable. Mm. And so you, you do kind of have to understand what, where you're playing. And, and a big part of that is just how serious or casual the users are. And yeah, uh, yeah that's kind of the spectrum, which is great for the guys looking to hook up. Mm. The first place you're going to want to go now is Tinder. And that's just really, really easy right. place to hook up. Yeah, so you, you, you kind of go you where can. like your objectives are leading you. You know, it's going to make more sense for you. Uh, whatever, whatever you're looking for, and then you, you know, you, I mean, your whole your whole approach here is really to get women that are suited to you, right? Because they got the same motivations, right? You 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 were talking about return on investment, but then, but then when you're talking about that, you're like, well, yeah, because they, you know, they we're looking at the girls who match us, and so your a lot of the basis of you know you getting a better return on investment is actually kind of making sure you get a better match quickly. Is that am I? Am I yeah, right with yeah that? that's true. I think like a lot of times when you are on more casual dating sites, mm. you kind of go into it knowing what you're going to get out of it. And yeah. so I think the biggest benefit is not necessarily ease of hookup. Mm. And a lot of times it's it's the ability to be uh, uh, more authentic in mm. your intentions because mm. it's not to say my experience with women like on more serious sites like eHarmony. Yeah. I mean, when a girl tells me she like wants to get married, sometimes I think it makes it easier for her to be seduced in some ways. I mean, I think women that are, are really like when they say where like things like they want something serious, I think a lot of times, I mean, my experience has been they're no harder than the next girl that just wants, that's on a little bit more hookup minded and yeah. openly. So I don't mm. know, but I think in, in, in that, in these cases, it allows us as men to be more authentic about what we're looking for and not yeah. have to yeah. feel like we need to mislead her and pretend mm. like we're looking for something serious too, mm. just so that we can hook up with her and then not call her. So, you know, and I think it's different for different guys. I think it probably depends maybe a little bit on skill level too, you know, with offline stuff. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it doesn't matter what site you are on. Women from dating sites do hook up. And I'm uh, definitely experienced a lot of that myself and with clients just reporting back. But it is nice to just be straightforward about it. And it's a little more fun too, like on Tinder and you get, like I mentioned, like some really over the top messages, the yeah. banner and the mm. kind of role playing and mm. just, you know, it's a little more technical in some ways. I think it's a little bit harder to pull off, frankly. Mm. But you have to have more practice with it because, like, it's hard to teach somebody, for example, like text game. There are all these text game products. Mm. It's so much easier to teach people how to use OkCupid and send messages. Right. And like it's in my system, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's slower, and you don't have to. You know, it's people. It's, the messages are more serious, so you don't have to be hilarious. You don't have mm. to be as witty. And so these kind of you know Tinder type applications, they make things harder. But it is mm. really, really good practice for guys that are wanting to learn how to have a little more game so to say but on the dating sites i think you in a lot of, in a lot of cases especially the more serious it is the more you want to tone down the game a little bit and the over the top kind of humor and teasing and trying to push her into role play you know about your future uh, yep. marriage and divorce that kind of stuff so hmm. but yeah i think if you can get it down it in in tinder which again it's a little more technical but if you can figure out how to do it by yeah. getting more experience on dating sites and maybe even using playing around with badu which is a similar format happens mm. pretty quick the more experience you get with that the you know the, the more you'll be able to feel like you can kind of hook up when you want to without mm. ever having to feel like you're being misleading to right. the women right. you know, like you're being a player so you can be great. authentic you can yeah yeah exactly it's great to be a player mm. that, with women that want to be played you know yeah. and that's yeah. that's part of me is the beauty of of these kind of more hookup minded applications mm. so you just touched on something like uh, i want to go back over this because this is one of the questions i had how seriously should you take what is said on profiles you said like sometimes women are looking for long-term relationships well like that this is kind of thing they're stating or maybe marriage in their profiles but oftentimes you know you find that it, you know it doesn't really work out like that and they and women often or obviously also have age criteria and things like that so how sh how seriously should guys 
take what is said on profiles and, and selecting the people they're going to message? Not too seriously. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the biggest thing, and as guys, the, the number one thing that we're most concerned about is, is she as attractive as she looks in our, in our photos. Yeah. And so the, the number one thing that my recommendation for that is just be very wary with women that don't have at least two photos and at least one of those photos shows a very clear shot of what her body looks like. Okay. So, you know, least butt up level um, mm. because the, the, the reality is, is that a lot of women do def- deceive are quite deceiving with their photos. They take it from just the perfect angle. And I've had mm. a lot of situations where I showed up and the girl looked nothing like I thought she was going to look. Right. And so the more I get, uh, you know, as I get better with online dating, I tend to just not take risks with that. And I, mm-hmm. I rarely, rarely take risks unless she looks, you know, stunning in, her, in a couple of her pictures. And I think, okay, even in the worst case scenario here, mm-hmm. she's still going to be pretty attractive. Well, so how do you, I mean, so you're saying some of the pictures, you know, you, you can be tricked by the pictures. And we're also in the, the age of photoshopping, professional photos, and as you say, angles and, and all sorts. And everyone's choosing their best pictures. So how, how do you get past that? Right. How, how, do, how do you screen the photos and what, what are you looking for as I go, I guess, red flags that it may not look like what, what you're going to meet? Well, they have, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of guys would have heard of like the fat girl overhead shot. So when she's mm. using angles, especially a, an angle that's, that's shot from above, that tends to make her look slimmer. Okay. She's got up, yeah, those photos with black clothes on. I mean, the, you, you get used to it and, you know, you mm. can look at photos that maybe look like they could be outdated, especially if you're dating. You know, I, d- I tend to date um, in the 19 to 22 range okay. is kind of my sweet spot. So I don't mm. de- deal with a lot of that but my clients do mm. where women are using outdated photos mm. and so that's another thing if photos look really kind of grainy pixelated you know there's a good chance it was taken four or five years ago right so you want to be aware of that as well mm. and a, one good strategy that I use especially for young guys that you know where this makes sense I think for a lot of my older clients this doesn't mm. seem like such a natural thing to do but I we'll try to push girls to Facebook. Either I'll say like, Hey, I don't know. Mm. I just, I say that I'll make excuses like Mm. stupid stuff. Like, Hey, you know, I just joined this site and I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on it. Um, you know, here, add me on Facebook so we can keep chatting and I'll Mm. do that. Whereas I know I could probably even get her phone number at that point, Mm. but Mm. I do that because I don't even want her phone number until I know more of what she looks like. So I take Mm. a small risk with that, but a lot of the girls are going to drop off right there are the Mm. ones that are trying to deceive you with their photos. Uh, So I send her that message and she stops responding. I, I, I usually consider it a saved time, right? Because mm. when you get her on Facebook, a lot of times you're going to have access to hundreds of photos. So you're going to know, right. you're going to have a yeah, very good idea of what she looks like. Yeah, and as you were saying before, that works out better for her as well. She knows what she's getting. So Yeah, exactly. It adds a level of mm. trust. You know, assuming yeah, that she's confident mm. enough about what she looks like in her photos, mm. in most cases she's going to, ex- you know, and assuming she's on yeah. Facebook, which in most girls, depending on what country mm. you're in, but most of them are, are on it, mm. then... There's really no reason. I mean, there's not that much of a reason right. unless she's just one of those girls that says is weird about it and says, "Hey, I don't add guys that right. I don't know in person on Facebook," which will happen sometimes. That's fine. Mm. Then in that case, you can try to move her to email. Say, "Okay, well, that's fine. Well, I'm still probably going to close my account. So, what's your email address?" Mm. She gives you her email, and then the first email you send her, you send a couple photos of yourself in right. the email mm. and say, "Hey, here are a couple photos of me that aren't my profile. Mm. Yeah, send me a couple of yours too. You know, and try to do right. Try to basically get her to reciprocate. So mm. there are other ways to do it." But my general rule is, is is maybe at the beginning, if you're trying to get some experience with dating, take a little mm. bit of a risk. If you can't tell what she's quite what she's looking like, just don't take her anywhere where you're going to have to spend money on her. You know, meet her for tea or whatever. So max, you're going to have to spend five bucks on her. Yeah. And then, you know, once you start getting better and your time with date, you know, dating and first dates becomes mm. more valuable because you're in, you know, you're in higher demand basically with women on mm. different dating sites, then you're going to want to take less and less risks. And then, so if you can't get more photos of a girl, just next her, just say, okay, it's not worth it. I'm not sure what she looks like. And I don't want to waste an hour or two hours of my time with her. Um, do that or wear your running shoes to the date and just be ready to get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. So like coming back to like your, your traveling, one of the things I, I believe you said, you mentioned this in your book is like, before you go to a country and you were talking about it earlier, you know, you're contacting a bunch of girls and sometimes do you invite them to like meet at the same time or am I getting that wrong? 
Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, mm. I don't tend to do that so much with girls from dating sites. So the more casual the site, the more natural that's going to be. So you okay. can pull that off, for example, on Tinder. You can invite mm. girls, especially if you get them on Facebook first, and then you're like, kind of chatting them on there. You can say, mm. hey, I'm going to have some people over tonight. Like, why don't you come, come by, right? Mm. And so <clears throat> the key is... When you do the multiple, uh, when you invite multiple people to the same place at the same time, yep. Yep. there are a couple of factors at play here. First, if, if, if it's a more serious site and you invite like five girls from Tinder, for example, even that's a little too more ser- too much like too dating centric mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. hookup centric. It would be weird if you invited four girls to Tinder to the same bar at the same time as you and four girls. That would be really weird. Mm-hmm. However, if you're already having a house party. Right. And you invited four girls to the house party and four of them showed up. Mm. That would be perfectly awesome. Like you, yeah, I mean, you're going around, you're meeting tons of people, you got attractive girls there. That's only going to help you. Those girls are going to fight for you. Mm. But if you're at a, you invite them all to a bar, they're going to be like, who's this weird skis ball? He really invited, and they're going to start talking. They realize they're all from Tinder mm. and they're going to be like, who you are? This guy's a creepo. Like, I can't mm. believe you did this. Mm. Okay. But if you use like, there are other sites that aren't as necessarily dating sites that I, you know, one of them, is uh, I use like couch surfing sometimes, which is a site for travelers. And so I'll message when I go to a new city, I've got a template message. Again, I don't customize. I have an assistant actually do it for me. She goes through, she finds all the attractive girls, send them messages. I'm not just trying to hook up. I do take a very social approach. Mm-hmm. My message does have a, a, a subtle amount of flirtation in it so that mm-hmm. the girls with boyfriends kind of do get screened out about by the message. Mm-hmm. They do kind of feel it a little bit, but it's not Oh, basically overtly flirtatious in the sense that right. like it feels like a dating message. I don't want it to mm. feel like a dating message. I want to feel like a social social message from a flirtatious guy, right? Mm-hmm. So, so basically, I I have that approach, and I do when I when I take that, I will invite multiple girls to the same place at the same time. And then mm-hmm. I've also experimented. I've ran you know Facebook ads about myself that drive them to a landing page. It's all about me, and they add mm. me as a friend, and then I invite them. And I've had parties. You know, I had a party with. Um, about like 40, 40, 50 girls that came in Budapest and I invited most of them from Facebook, some of them from couch surfing and uh, a couple from dating sites. But how, how much did you spend on that campaign just out of interest? Um, I spent, well, that full campaign, which didn't just involve that party. Mm. I think I spent around $120. Okay. Um, but I, I had, you know, well over a hundred girls add me on Facebook. I mean, my ROI on that was, was incredible actually. Right. Well, this is, I mean, this is, this is like, what I like about this is like, you know, obviously there's many guys out there, especially if they're new, they're more anxious to do things like cold approaching, right? Which is like walking up to strange, uh, strangers to women they don't know. You know, I remember my first steps back in like 2000, I used a couple of dating sites and I started uh, flirting on them because I wasn't sure about the stuff I was learning about attraction and stuff. So it was just easier that way. So, you know, all the stuff you're talking about kind of shows that, you know, you can, especially as online dating has developed so much as well now and it's very common now like you know it's just a kind of great way for someone who's new to all of this to try to you know get his feet wet first and get his first de- dates and get a bit of experience I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to jump into the the tough end of it and start cold approaching you know girls in bars or other situations where he feels a bit anxious i guess is that, is that your take on it yeah yeah and no, i think there's this is one of the best ways to practice your interactions with women. Mm-hmm. I mean, the my skills now, like if I, I don't do a lot of cold approaching and it's not mm. – because I do have like approach anxiety, just like any other guy. But like when I go out, it's and, and I'm with some friends or whatever. It's really rare that I don't mm-hmm. go and approach a few women and get at least a phone number or two. You know, mm-hmm. back before I really started getting online dating, I wouldn't have near this the success with cold approaches that I have yeah. now mm-hmm. because I wasn't as confident and I wasn't as well versed as I yeah. am now. Mm-hmm. Because you know, it's not only like the online interactions. Like I mean, some of the stuff from online does translate into offline. There's certain jokes that I make online and mm-hmm. I've realized when they work really effectively online a lot of times mm-hmm. as long as the delivery is right they work just as well offline yep. when I was just in Vegas I said some of the most ridiculous shit to a girl because I've been tindering all day okay. and, she, and she loved it I mean I was right. talking about stuff because you were in Vegas never, oh yeah part of it was <laughs> Vegas but I'm just I'm just saying but if you that, were like, tindering in I don't know like some small country town then you walked up to a girl and said the same thing. It might not go down so well. Well, it wouldn't have translated well if it were outside of the U.S. But yeah, in the U.S., yeah, yeah I mean, it depends. Like, obviously, like, one of the things you learn from online dating mm. is you learn how to adjust 
your mm. approach depending on the recipient of the message. Like, and one of the things I talk about is like simple girls. Like, if you realize a girl is simple and mm. not, I don't mean like stupid by simple. I mean like she has a simple sense of humor, or maybe her English is limited. Like, there are right. a lot of girls in the U.S. Mm. that are from other countries living there. And when you realize they're simple, you want to tone it down. You yeah, want to keep it totally. simple. You don't want to mm. go over the top. Mm. So you figure out like how you, you know you basically size up your market. Another thing that I teach is like depending on the age of the woman, what I, we found online dating sites, we've done a lot of testing depending on how old she is that really impacts your approach with younger girls you want to be more cocky over the top yep. you know take more risks and with mm. older women they don't seem to appreciate that very much and so mm. you're you, they, they like a, a more sincere kind of confident you know, mm. it's not like a beta approach but it's mm. still it's it's less alpha and less cocky and it's more down to earth it's more sincere but also confident yeah. so you see that you start to see the subtleties from online dating and mm. who it is that you're approaching and this particular girl yeah she was a young girl she was like 20 and she you know was clearly kind of in party mode and that's why the tinder thing worked because tinder is like the party of online dating you know mm. i mean the people are sending i told you i send messages to talk about bastard children and then i'm on the, on the ice break on the first message i send them i get a 70 percent response rate on this particular message right. so you can you can do stuff like that. So yeah, I mean it helps you. Like you start to see what is effective and what's not. And the other thing, like I mentioned before, I didn't used to be that confident on first dates, mm. but now like my my first dates and it sounds arrogant and I'm gonna risk sounding like a uh, blowhard saying this, but my mm. first dates go extremely extremely well almost every single time because mm. I've been on so many first dates. I know we we didn't get to give it exact number, but it could be like three hundred or something, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to get an exact number. I don't really mm. count, and I, yeah, I don't count any any. But what, kind what I love about metrics, that is because, like, you know, some guys worry that you know they they're never going to be able to learn this stuff, especially if they've been trying for a while. And it really all is just all down to experience, mostly. You know, it's 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 learning and learning some skills, and it's some experience, right? Yeah, and, yeah. You can get the foundations by mm. by reading, but yep, yep. you know, reading different materials out there. And I do recommend that you do it to mm. get some good foundations and to get. Yeah. A little bit ahead of the curve more quickly, but there's nothing that's nearly as effective as real experience. Yeah, you need because, both. You need you need some yeah. good advice. Make sure make sure you get the quality advice, and we're always talking about that on here. So you're going in the right direction, and then you do need the practical part because you know there's there's many guys who don't put enough effort into the practical part because that's just more more scary part. Um, but I, it is essential. That's what we we're saying here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and online uh, the online approach takes the scary stuff out of it. Hmm. Uh, obviously, you've got to meet the girls in person, but yeah. at that point, you're already... Yeah, you already of, kind of know them a little bit, so it's easier. Yeah, yeah. you're already in. I mean, you're yeah. basically in and your job is... It's a is, warm approach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're already in and your job is not to fuck yeah. it up, basically, yeah, yeah. whereas it's the other way around when you, yeah. when you do cold approaches. So, so man, I've got to close this off, but we, we always finish with the same question for everyone, so I'm going to hit you up with that. What would be your top three recommendations to men who are like, they're completely starting to zero, they haven't done anything yet, they haven't learned anything and they want to get results as fast as possible what would you recommend the top three things that they should do yeah the, the first thing would be you know it's something I've, I've talked about a bunch is just to take a step back and, and really look at the photos that you've got and yep. deci- and and basically you've got to take a very systematic approach on that mm. you've got to get a lot of photos and you've got to narr- weed them down so you want to start with mm. a lot and narrow them down and then eventually mm. use a very systematic approach to your photos, which is running them through my best face multiple times each. Yeah. I would recommend yeah. that you mm. at least do it two times, ideally three mm. to four times per photo. You average the score. So each each photo is going to get a score. So, you know, I've really seen photos scores below like 40 or 50. So it's going to be like a score somewhere between 40 and maybe 80, mm. 85. And you're going to take those scores. You're going to average them for each photo. And then you're going to have... Mm-hmm. a really good idea of how attractive each photo is and you're going to be systematic about that because again the mo- as things move more mobile a lot of the mobile apps are putting a lot of emphasis on that photo and so actually mm-hmm. i've seen that an evolution in the space of meeting women online has become that photos are becoming more and more important and i mm-hmm. want to i and I think a lot of guys, when they hear that, think, oh, well, I'm not good looking, so I won't do well online. The number one thing guys are doing wrong right now is they're doing their photos wrong. So that just mm. means that there can be a guy that's a lot 
better looking than you are and he's doing your his photos right. wrong yeah if you do your photos right all of a sudden right. you can be better looking than the better looking yeah. guy yeah well you get a better score but just by doing it smarter because you know you're by right I've heard, I've heard the complaints from girls because there's all these chest shots and stuff on sites right peers like nearly all the guys are doing the same thing basically yeah, um, yeah exactly. so if you just do it smarter you can easily you should be easily able to top them yeah exactly and so the, the next thing is just you know make sure that you're fishing in the right pond we've talked about the different dating sites today and it's just something that i see a lot of guys doing wrong is they mm. just go to the wrong sites mm. so just make sure that before you sign up for a site if it's one that we haven't talked about today and mm. i haven't already recommended get in there take a look around before you invest time and make yeah. sure that there are a lot of active users because mm. an, an, another thing and i'm going to mix these into two kind of tips in one here that a lot of guys they're going to crappy sites and they're sending a lot of messages to people that aren't active like i mentioned mm. zoos was it was a terrible site for a long time, and I have a feeling it may still be for the same reason because yep. they weren't showing you when people were last active. If you message mm. people that haven't been online within the last week, your response rate plummets. If you we you know, and yeah. if yeah. somebody hasn't been online in like three weeks, mm. you're gonna get a zero percent response rate. I don't care how good your message right, is. Right. Those are inactive mm. users. They're not coming back to the site anytime soon. Mm. And if they do, you're probably gonna be at the bottom of a pile of a bunch of other idiots that sent messages right. when the women weren't using the site either even if she does respond. come back your message will be buried under 100 messages right yeah exactly yeah. exactly i mean just a lot of guys just don't realize the mm. importance of this mm. and i've collected a lot of data that shows that it's extremely extremely important yeah. so that's the that's the other thing is just make sure you're using the right site that you're focusing on active users on those mm. sites and the third thing is just like your photos be very systematic in the sense that you don't want to waste time by sending the same ineffective message over and over again. So be systematic in terms of coming up with a few different ideas, like I mentioned, based on specific yep. situations, figure out how to do the keyword searches I talked about, mm. come up with messages that um, fit into those keywords, and then be just systematic about the way you test them. And, and like I said, mm. it's super simple to do. All you're going to do is keep a running tally of how many times you've sent each message and how many responses you've gotten. Mm. And mm -hmm. so if you have, if, if basically, you know, your profile text is obviously important too, and that could be a fourth one, but I think these are the main three things. So just starting with the right photos, making sure you get them on the right sites, mm -hmm. and then being very systematic about what messages are working. So if you're doing the copy and paste strategy, which is way more time efficient, yep. you, it's not the tracking itself. It doesn't take much time. So you're just going to keep track yep. of what's working, what's not, get rid of the stuff that's not, focus mm -hmm. on the stuff that's working. And then you're taking this all from a systematic yep kind of marketing optimization approach mm. that's that I found to be very, very effective and time efficient. Scott, this has been a real blast of an interview. Thank you very much. I'm sure it's going to be like one of my, our most popular because you just have so much experience and you've just been pouring it out all over the interview. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I just want to say thank you for your time, man, because it's been a real, real doozy of an uh, interview here. No, no, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. And thanks for having me on the show. Just quickly today, as usual, you can get the interview transcript and links to everything we mentioned on the show at datingskillsreview.com slash DSP50. Now, there's some extra links to some useful online dating articles that Scott and I were actually chatting about before the interview, but we ran out of time during the interview to actually discuss them. So I didn't want you to miss out on those. And I've added them onto the page. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that and got a lot out of it. And we'll be seeing you soon in a new episode of Dating Skills Podcast. Take control of your dating life today. Take one idea or one insight from today's episode and apply it today. Don't wait. Do it today. That's all it takes to change your life, step by step, episode by episode. Learn more about what I, Angel Donovan, and my team do at datingskillsreview.com how we help men like you take control of their dating lives.